ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा दिस जॉय टू यू दिस विल बी माय माय लास्ट टॉक ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द स्ट्रगल although it will continue in other ways but this particular these particular stanzas of 42 43 44 of the first of the first chapter of the bhagavad gita they're all about the battle between the good and the bad the bad side and the good ranged against each other ready to fight and one may ask himself if god is the only reality how did he enclose us in such delusion that we don't see that reality the indian scriptures speak of koshas koshas is a sheath it's sort of like a, an onion when you peel an onion get rid of all its peels you have nothing left because an onion is made of peels and so you are enclosed from god by a successive layer of delusions and those delusions are as i said they're called koshas we must remove them one by one how is it that a turtle looking at a painting could only think of anything whether it was good to uh, whether it was good to eat because he's got a blanket on his mind his mind hasn't yet become clear enough to understand that the the that beauty is not just something you can eat it's something you can re- you can relate to mentally emotionally and so life as it evolves gradually you see the kosha of darkness the sheath or a uh, peel of an onion when it gets taken peeled off gradually what happens is that the light becomes more and more visible you've got a thick blanket between you and god first of all it's a big building with hard rock walls as those are removed then they become more like a blanket and you see sort of a dull a uh, movement perhaps through that blanket but you can't discern colors then you have that removed and there's uh, there's sort of a thick veil gradually the veils become lifted the more the veils are removed the more you begin to see clearly that the world around you is a part of your own self it's not separate from yourself and when finally that last veil is removed the this is the state known in buddhism as nirvana nirvana means when you are without any of these sheaths any of these things that tend to upset your mind or move your mind you become completely still this many people think and officially in buddhism this seems to be the thought that this is the goal of life quite truthfully i can't imagine anybody seeking such a goal sincerely i can imagine reaching a point where he's good kind compassionate all these things but to reach that point where there's no one to be compassionate no one to be kind uh, where there's in fact no one to be anything this i think nobody would work that hard for nothing they always will stop short of that goal and i read a tract in thailand many years ago in which it compared the uh, um nirvana that they believe buddha buddha was talking about with the satchidananda of shankaracharya and uh, satchidananda uh, shankaracharya spoke of satchidananda that god the ultimate experience of god in fact god himself is defined as satchidananda ever existing ever conscious ever new bliss as my guru translated it and they this article said well it's true that there is a fleeting bliss at the beginning but then there's nothingness how can anybody work to become nothing it's just not feasible there is something within us that you can't get rid of you can't get rid of two thoughts one is the thought of consciousness feeling consciousness not just being aware there has to be some awareness of that of what you're aware of there has to be some reaction or if not reaction at least a uh, recognition of feeling feeling is the essence of consciousness without feeling you're just a robot that's why patanjali said 
yoga is chitta vritti nirodha. Yoga is the neutralization of the vortices of feeling. And there is another thing that you can never get rid of, and that is the thought of self. I myself, some people say, oh, someday computers will be uh, as conscious as we are. They'll have individuality. In fact, we should think in terms of computers' rights. <laughs> what a joke. But you'll never find a computer that can have feeling. It may think everything through more quickly, more logically, more everything than you. It still can't be conscious. Until it has feeling, it won't be conscious. And so feeling and self-feeling, I am the one who am enjoying. These things are not lost. But in the beginning, what Yogananda did, what Yogananda says that that when you attain that state of complete egolessness, at first there is a nothing. You're just sort of, it's like an empty hall. And then in that suddenly floods this great bliss. So Buddha's nirvana is a true state, but it is the brief state. And Buddha would not have had that compassion that he showed. He would have not had that wisdom that he showed. He would have not had that love for everybody that he showed had he not had this state of Satchidananda, absolute bliss. There was one time when a beautiful prostitute came to him and said she was in love with him. He said, I love you too. And his disciples were frantic with fear that he would fall. And uh, she said, then come to me. He said, no, I will come to you later. And they became all the more afraid. And then some years later, he said, my beloved, the prostitute is calling. And uh, he went running to find her, and the disciples were running distractedly after him to save him from this, this fall. And he found this woman. She had, she had sores all over her body. She was ugly. She had lost everything. Venereal disease was destroying her. And he took her head and put it in his lap and stroked her and made her well again. And he said, now do you understand what love is? Love cannot be for the body. Love cannot be for the ego. Love is something infinite. In fact, love is. You have to feel love for and from Satchitananda. The highest truth is not love, but bliss. And we have love for that bliss, and that is the highest love. So the koshas, in Italian, kosha is uh, uh, the word for thigh. And somebody in Italian was lecturing and saying, you've got, got, got to get rid of these koshas, and everybody was sort of saying, was he saying, talking about getting rid of our thighs? But the truth is, you've got to get rid of your sheaths of consciousness that hide you, that separate you from God. And once you're free from that, you will be God. There's no differentiation between you and he. And that's not blasphemy, because Jesus said, yeah, I and my Father are one. And when they accused him of blasphemy, he said, don't the scriptures say, ye are God's? Yes, that is your destiny. Joy to you.